going on everyone john matrix here uh gonna be jumping back into the scp universe we are doing scp 5001 uh sarcosanct from the exploring series links are down below in the description as always to the original video without my commentary and reaction and to the exploring series channel if you could do me a favor click those links go over there and uh if you enjoy the exploring series content give the man a sub if you're not sub to him already and uh if you like this video after we go through it then please go over there and give the video a like uh, if you want to join us as we do these reaction live, uh, there is a join button and a link in the description to the YouTube membership benefits and tiers that I offer. Uh, so yeah, take a look at those. If you decide you want to join, you can get early access to videos, priority and any kind of requests you have, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if you want to be a member, check it out. See if you have any of that stuff, have any industry, if you decide you want to take your support to the next level. Uh, so with all that said and done, we're just going to jump right into it here. Again, SCP-5001, uh, Sarcosanct. SCP-5001, Sacrosanct. Sacrosanct. The SCP Foundation is generally considered to be the premier... Prepare for plenty of artwork from Control. ...air containment specialist in the SCP universe. If it can be contained, it's likely that the Foundation has contained it, or is working on a way to do it. Although they might be the most capable ones nowadays, it doesn't mean that they were the first, and various articles have shown the SCP Foundation stumbling onto containment cells created in far older times. While most of these ancient containment systems are rudimentary at best, the one we'll be looking at today is shockingly modern, and the Foundation has no idea who built it, or what's worse, what it contains. That is kind of scary. Let's begin. The idea that there is something, there's a containment system that the SCP Foundation doesn't understand and they don't know what's contained in it, that's, yeah, that's a little, that's a little spoopy. SCP-5001 is a massive biomechanical structure, meaning it contains both machines and living parts. Right. Measuring 53 kilometers in diameter, located deep underneath northern Russia. Interesting. While the Foundation has ascertained that the structure itself is non-anomalous, its existence is pretty strange, due to several factors, including its size and position in the Earth. I was gonna say, I wonder if this was something that was made by, like, you know, followers of the Church of the Broken God at some point in time during history and was abandoned and has now just been rediscovered or what? They found records detailing the structure's ongoing status dating back to 11,000 Yeah, you better not spoil it or the comment's gonna get on you, Kelschman. BCE, recorded in modern measurement systems, as well as a number of documents written in Phoenician, Ancient Hebrew, Greek, Latin, Anglo-Saxon, Modern Russian, Modern English, and Modern Mandarin. What the f- Okay, that is quite the diverse set of languages from throughout history. While one would think time travel is involved, they have yet to find any devices inside of the structure that affect time, and no evidence of any residue that would be left behind by temporal anomalies. Hmm. Finally, they have found mechanical devices inside the structure that are not currently reproducible by Foundation engineering, so it's pretty advanced stuff. They've also found a spherical central chamber inside of the facility that seems to be hollow, composed primarily of graphene and an unidentified compound, supported by 12 large cylindrical rods, each a half a kilometer in diameter. Hmm. They believe that 5001, and this central chamber specifically, is a containment unit for an unknown anomalous object. While they don't really know anything about what's inside of the chamber, since they can't probe- So, I mean, yeah, I guess the, the, the questions would be like, A, who built this? It seems like a rather large facility. So like who throughout history could have built this? I guess maybe this was something, maybe the Bigfoot species or even, like, I, you would think like it wouldn't be fairies, right? Cause they have, you know, reality bending powers. So they could probably do things in other ways, but maybe, but maybe Bigfoot species or maybe other, some kind of like lost civilization of man, or maybe even, an SCP facility that survives, uh, you know, a K-class scenario and into the world scenario, and it was forgotten and had been, you know, maybe this is an S actually an SCP facility 
that survived decay class scenario and they're just rediscovering it and something else crazy is contained in there, right? But I guess that would be the question is like, who built this and to contain what? Well, those, those are like the major questions, I guess, so far. Bit ...or get inside of it. The fact that this structure exists to this degree tells us that there's probably something pretty bad in there. Yeah. Obviously, that's not the end of the article. So let's look at how this place was discovered. Take it easy, Ryan. Due to yeah, its going, existence brother. in Russia, it was actually first discovered by the Soviet Union's GRU Division P in 1953, who were looking into some seismological activity in that area. Their reasons for doing so are still unclear to the Foundation, but of course this led to them finding the massive cavern containing 5001. They drilled down into the cavern and quickly set out to breach the walls of 5001 itself, but all of their attempts failed, and the project was abandoned after two years. A few years later, Khrushchev showed renewed interest in getting into 5001 and funded the project until it makes he was sense deposed. During the Cold War. In 1969, Division P turned to the Foundation in hopes of cooperation, and together they signed an agreement that said the two organizations would maintain joint control of the structure if the Foundation could manage to enter it. Of course, in part thanks to some technology purchased from the Global Occult Coalition, the Foundation got in two years later. The two organizations both dived into research and studied the anomaly for two decades until the dissolution of the Soviet Union. With the government, and by extension Division P, falling apart, a number of high-ranking officials stole numerous pieces of technology mm. belonging to the organization. I would think the SCP would have things set up so that if something like that were to happen, they could easily just take control of the facility themselves with minimal issues. But I mean, then again, there's been plenty of, of things stolen and taken from the SCP Foundation throughout many stories. So most of this was sold to Marshall Carter and Dark, but other pieces ended up in the hands of groups like makes the sense. Chaos Insurgency. I mean, it would make sense, you know, when the Soviet Union collapsed, there was was one of the big problems was uh military stuff and you know chemical biological nuclear weapons being sold in the black market to various people and countries so it wouldn't surprise me that in the scp universe you know anomalous things would also be sold to you know marshall carter and dark and various other organizations Despite all of this, though, knowledge of 5001's existence remained a secret, and the Foundation took over sole control. Next, let's look at some of the tech that the Foundation found within 5001, starting with something referred to as ontological stabilizers. These were found surrounding the inner chamber in two layers, and worked to stabilize the level of reality in a given area. Gotcha. suggesting that whatever reality is inside anchors. the interior chamber is capable of altering reality. The Foundation successfully managed to reverse engineer these stabilizers under the direction of Dr. Robert Scranton, creating their own, more effective Scranton reality anchors. Yep. A proposal was put forward to replace the ontological stabilizers with SRAs, but it was ultimately rejected. Directly above the central containment area, the Foundation discovered nine self-contained energy sources, engines, and propulsion systems, referred to as large hyperluminal engines. Interesting. Each of the nine LHEs are 22 meters in height and 5 meters in diameter, and although they have been unable to reverse engineer them, they have provided some insight into faster-than-light engine construction and three of them are being used for some experimental orbital weapons. None of the nine engines were active when found, and don't hmm. seem to be serving any purpose in 5001 currently. That's very intriguing then, because you would think like, okay, yeah, these engines are a power source that's running this facility to keep this thing contained, but if they're off, what purpose do they then serve? Is this a situation where whatever is contained in being it bends reality is a reality bending weapon and they can use these engines as a way of powering it and then they can yeah use it to bend reality in some way remember when i said that 5001 was biomechanical 
Well, that part comes from something referred to as compound B705, which comprises large portions of the external walls of 5001, as well as the central chamber, displaying remarkable resilience to destruction or any attempts to reform it. Hmm. Also, any portions of this substance that are removed will attempt to reintegrate with other parts. More curiously, though, is the other effect that this compound possesses, which is the release of a constant electromagnetic pulse. The compound will release a pulse once every 7 nanoseconds, which grows in intensity based on the mass of the compound present. Subjects close to the compound experience clearer thoughts, increased mental fortitude, and ah. an increased pain threshold. It's believed, so it though, that these people. electromagnetic pulses are just the residue of the compound's actual effect traveling through an unknown medium. Finally, the Foundation found Omega, an artificial intelligence located on a single terminal in an unmarked room. The terminal contained numerous ports... Okay, so... This place is kind of crazy, right? This is a big discovery. You got some kind of massive place that's biomechanical. It's got crazy ass engines that, you know, are giving them new pathways of technology that can provide potentially faster than light engine capabilities, as well as oral, I would assume, directed energy weapon uh, capabilities. Uh, at this, this bio part of the biomechanical stuff uh is is you know seemingly enhancing people's cognitive abilities um you know making giving them more energy think clearer more pain resistance now you have some kind of like super ai here like what the fuck is this place not to mention that all of the engines uh don't seem to actually be powering this facility so like what is powering this facility or you know what 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 is this place dude of unknown design or function, and wires connected to the terminal spread to numerous locations around 5001. The Foundation was unable to directly access Omega's code, but the terminal did allow for the input of questions, which Omega would produce responses for, showcasing a degree of intelligence. Chat GPT. Despite this, Omega would refuse to answer any question which would provide info about 5001's function or history. Hmm. Since the foundation had already- That's pretty fascinating, then. It, it is programmed specifically not to reveal the function of the facility and or its history, who made it and why. That's a little sus, but at the same time, very interesting. So, I don't know. My brain's kind of going two different directions then, because it's almost like, okay, uh, something terrible could be contained here and so this ai has been programmed with okay like if anything should happen it's this ai is programmed with containing whatever this is as well as running this facility and keeping it going to make sure this place is contained uh and i i would assume unless <clears throat> someone is authorized that is not able to reveal what you know is contained in the history of this facility so like so you can't really get any kind of clue as to what is there and what it could be used for. I don't know. Interesting. Already been well on their way to developing their own AIs and they couldn't access Omega's code. They mostly ignored Omega for a while. In 2010, however, a doctor managed to access portions of the code and it proved to be sufficiently advanced and useful enough that it greatly enhanced the foundation's AI projects. An incident occurred related to Omega on March 19th, 2013, when a doctor accessed the terminal without proper authorization. Camera feeds from the room showed the doctor producing a metallic device of unknown origin from their clothing and inserting it into one of the ports on the terminal. Interesting. The doctor and Omega were unresponsive for the following 20 minutes, at which point the doctor suddenly collapsed. The doctor was found to be deceased, with the metal device found to be a cybernetic implant. It's unclear how the doctor received the implant, as it was not foundation made or... Yeah, it, was, it, is, it almost seemed like he was trying to like download the AI into something to smuggle it out. Or at least some kind of information. Approved. 
A more significant incident occurred on December 30th, 2019, when the entity inside of the primary containment cell breached containment. Yikes. A large explosion in the northeastern section disrupted electric flow to around 25% of the structure, including numerous essential components. The Foundation still isn't sure what caused the explosion, but the most prevalent theories are that it was sabotage from a group of interest, possibly former members of Gru Division P, or it was a malfunction caused by the actions of the doctor with the cybernetic implant. This explosion led to a series of unfortunate events that nearly resulted in the total destruction of SCP-5001. After the explosion occurred and electricity stopped flowing to various parts of the facility, the Hume levels inside the containment cell began to rise, okay. meaning that the entity inside was becoming more active. Right. Although this isn't noticed immediately by personnel. Security arrived at the explosion site, finding two researchers dead and one in critical condition. As security began to scout the area for potential threats, researchers noticed the Hume levels rising, as well as a rising temperature inside the cell. A number of personnel in the monitoring room begin to report nausea and headaches as the Hume levels continue to rise. The ontological stabilizers are starting to work at maximum capacity, but they are still not capable of halting the rising levels. This results in the declaration of a low-level state of emergency at 5001, and a nearby site begins to transport materials to immediately repair the facility. By this point, four minutes after the explosion, the temperature inside of the cell has raised from negative 107 degrees Celsius to zero degrees, Yikes. soon stabilizing at 37 degrees. Additionally, tremors are spreading outward from 5001, reaching the nearby site, and the cylinders underneath the containment cell are experiencing a high degree of pressure. Personnel are notified that the interlock mechanism is released, although they don't know exactly what that means. Yeah, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Nearly five minutes after the explosion, numerous personnel in the facility begin to vomit or hyperventilate, and the monitoring mechanisms report a level 9 breach. This is followed by all the lights in 5001 dimming significantly, and the Hume levels inside the cell continue to rise. Also rising, though, is the actual containment cell itself, and seismic activity increases outside of the facility. Six minutes in now, an intermediate level state of emergency is declared, and one of the O5s is notified of the situation. The upper levels of 5001 are evacuated, and a special MTF consisting of trained reality benders is sent in to assist. The containment cell continues to accelerate upwards through the facility, and the monitoring systems now report a level 8 breach. So wait, is level 8 worse than level 9? I still don't know like what the differences in the various levels are, but uh, you would think the higher number means worse, right? So clearly there's some kind of reality altering thing happening in here, whether, I don't know. I'm wondering like, is it a being, is it an entity or is this some kind of like portal to another reality or something like that? That's like spilling into our, I, or, like, you know, did, did this facility tap into some kind of energy from another reality and they contained it in this? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what this is or what this could be because like, they haven't mentioned that it's any kind of like being yet, right? I mean, he said entity, but that could be anything. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what this could be that's contained in here. Clearly, it's some kind of like powerful reality bending thing. The Hume levels keep going up. The temperature has risen from like negative 100 degrees Celsius to like 37 degrees Celsius. And they're having to bring in other reality benders to contain it because the reality anchors they have there are at maximum, I assume, from what he said. So it's, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Six and a half minutes after the initial explosion, the MTF begins to head towards 5001. The tremors in the area are increasing in intensity, and a large malformation appears in the landscape directly above the underground cavern. 
The containment cell suddenly halts its ascent and begins to vibrate intensely, exerting more pressure onto the cylindrical rods beneath it. This continues for nearly a minute until the cell jerks upwards and continues ascending. Hmm. All non-essential Foundation personnel have been evacuated at this point, and the monitoring systems now report a level 7 breach. As the cell continues traveling upwards, it crushes multiple ontological stabilizers in its path, causing the Hume levels inside to rise even Keep faster. Going up, yeah. Six of the large hyperluminal engines that are still operational in the facility activate simultaneously, causing the cell to rapidly descend. This mm. only continues for 16 seconds, however, when the cell's descent starts to slow and then halts completely before going back up. Interesting. So it's almost like the engines are part of the containment system in case this thing were to breach and, and rise up, this engine, yeah, pushes it back down to at least the point where it can't rise up anymore. Clearly, something very bad is going to happen if this thing ever reaches the surface. Yeah, seems like it. Nine minutes in, the Hume levels have reached a point far beyond normal, as personnel from the nearby site arrive to begin emergency repairs. Ten minutes and twenty seconds in, the ground directly above 5001 splits open and begins to widen, creating an opening. The cell breaches the ceiling of 5001 and continues to rise upwards, the monitor is now reporting a level 6 breach. The tremors felt at the nearby foundation site are equivalent to the epicenter of a 5.0 earthquake. Gotcha. The opening in the ground above the facility is now around 10 kilometers across, allowing orbital satellites to view the primary containment cell. 11 minutes and 17 seconds after the explosion, all personnel currently under medical care simultaneously enter a comatose state. The MTF arrives shortly after, but prove ineffective, mostly because of the ontological stabilizers on site, as well as the overwhelming Hume level of the entity inside the container. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? Uh, as he was talking about this, uh, I was almost like, what are they really going to be able to do, right? Because it's like, you've got this this... A, you've got the reality anchors, right? So that's going to like cancel out any kind of real effect that they have. And then you've got this other being that's fighting against them that seems to be overwhelming them, but not to the point where it's getting out. But like, yeah. It, 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 obviously, I mean, they, that's their job. They got to go there and do that. That's part of their task force, you know, but it's like, what are they really going to be able to do? I guess... It would be more of a situation of if the reality anchors fail, then they would be the backup to try to contain it until they can get more reality anchors there to stabilize things, I guess. Containment cell. 13 and a half minutes in, the damage to 5001 has been repaired, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. And power is supplied to 94% of the facility, although no immediate effects of this are noticeable. The monitors now report a level five breach. A high-level state of emergency is declared, and all personnel inside of 5001 are ordered to evacuate. Since it doesn't seem like the facility itself is going to be able to stop the entity from ascending, the Foundation decides to prepare some anomalous weaponry to take it out, notably the High Energy Concentration Orbital Railgun, or HECOR. Gotcha, Remember okay. when I said earlier that the Foundation took some of those hyperluminal yeah. engines and was using them for some experimental weaponry? Now we're at a level 4 breach, but after this, the instruments inside of the facility stop reporting new data. It seems the facility isn't done yet, though, as multiple explosions occur at the bottom of 5001, launching out three large tungsten rods at hypersonic speeds towards Yikes. the containment cell. They successfully penetrate it, causing it to halt for half a minute before continuing to ascend. Bro, what is in this thing? Shortly after, all of the personnel that were previously like for real, what is in this thing? I'm getting like, you know, Phoenix vibes from the X-Men here. You know, like the SCP somehow contained the Phoenix force in this and is trying to get out or some shit. In a comatose state, suddenly become alert and hostile, attacking anyone nearby. 
Seven medical staff die because of this, and the hostile personnel attempt to consume the bodies. Yum. Nearly 17 minutes in, the tremors cause the nearby site to collapse, and the containment cell reaches the surface. 30 seconds later, it begins to spin, picking up speed as dust particles orbit around it. At close to 19 minutes after this all began, the entity inside of the cell releases a pressure wave outwards, causing those caught in it to experience irradiated skin, spontaneous nice. hair growth, and intense nausea. More pressure waves are soon released in rapid succession, causing those affected to experience sudden tumorous growths, loss of higher cognitive function, and reformation of limbs. They also begin to attack one another, as a single vocalization emanates from the cell, saying, Revert to my domain. What, are we getting into Jujutsu Kaisen here or whatever? Is this thing having a domain expansion? Like, what the fuck? 30 seconds after this, the Foundation fires Hekor, destroying large portions of the containment cell and directly exposing the entity inside, which is yeah, obscured like from view due to the explosion. That's a bad thing. Whatever exactly that did allowed 5001 to use rapid bursts of electromagnetic pulses to pull the containment cell back down into the earth. As Hekor recharges to fire again, individuals affected by the pressure waves slip into comas, their internal organs mutating before they die. Yikers, brother. Eight minutes go by with the containment cell slowly descending and medical personnel rushing to the foundation site to assist the injured. SCP-5001 itself begins to regenerate the damage it's received through unknown means, and the ground above the facility slowly begins to close. Crisis narrowly averted, but it's quite clear that whatever exactly is inside of that containment cell is immensely dangerous, but SCP-5001 is equally impressive. Towns in a 500 kilometer radius around 5001 were amnesticized in order to keep all info about the incident a secret, and a few days later the foundation went back into 5001. There was still a lot of damage, but overall the facility oh, was shit. intact and still functional. When they came to the terminal hosting Omega, they found some text displayed on the screen. I'll read it verbatim. Hello my children. Although you have grown immensely since your earliest days, you have much room to grow. Your species' intellect is merely a bud, with so much potential. Your weapons are powerful, your medicine is supreme, your engineering is beautiful. With proper guidance and care, you are sure to reach an elevated state of being, and transcend your bodies for something more whole and perfect. That is why it pains me so dearly to request that you leave this place immediately. Your studying and probing have almost resulted in the end of all I had worked towards to keep you alive. If you comply, I guarantee that the Devourer will never escape, the and devourer? your species will be free to pursue the enlightenment of technology for all eternity. Okay, so this is, yeah, I, this, this is the cage of uh, Yaldabaoth. Uh, that, that, that's where this is going here, which would line up with what I said at the beginning, that this was a facility made by, you know, the Meccan way back when. Let this be my final gift to you, directly from the center of my broken heart. Yep. At this point, the Foundation is considering reclassifying 5001 to Archon, something that could be contained but shouldn't be for our own sake. You might already have a good idea of what exactly is going on here, but I'll explain. Obviously, the biggest clues come from that final bit of text, sent out by the Omega AI. It refers to us as its children, believes that one day we can transcend our bodies into something more perfect, wants us to pursue the enlightenment of technology, mm -hmm. and mentions its own broken heart. If it hasn't clicked yet, Omega is the broken god or at least some sort of representation of it. Yeah. The Church of the Broken God, and by extension the Mechanites that preceded them, have had access to incredible technological anomalies for millennia, explaining how they could have created such an impressive facility so long ago. 
The doctor that accessed the terminal with a cybernetic implant was secretly a member of the church. That makes and sense. And didn't fare too well connecting to what is essentially their god. That brings us to its purpose then, and what exactly it's containing. We have a few clues here. One being the fact that the entity is a supremely powerful reality bender that can cause humans around it to experience illness and yep, physical and deformations, as well mutate as a feral, into feral state of mind, yeah, states. which includes cannibalism. Yep. Another clue is that the entity spoke during this process. And that's what Y'all the Boss is about. Y'all the Boss is, you know, about primal, um, primal energies, primal being, et cetera, et cetera, savagery. So telling us to revert to its domain. Finally, Omega referred to the entity as the Devourer. The Devourer, yeah. That word is used in multiple different places across the SCP universe, but if we add everything up, we really get one answer. We have a facility run by the Church of the Broken God, and potentially a representation of the Broken God itself which is containing an immensely powerful entity that wants humans to revert to its more feral and base domain of existence. The entity, therefore, is Yaldabaoth, the principal deity of Sarcasism, and the eternal enemy of the Broken God. According to myth, Yaldabaoth created life, and the Broken God Mekain gave us intellect, mm -hmm. leading to the two of them battling. In the end, Mekain became the Broken God, but used part of its existence in order to cage, cage Yaldabaoth for all eternity. While this is typically seen as more metaphorical than literal, what we seem to have here is a is very literal, literal case yeah. of the broken god containing Yaldabaoth. I got gotcha. you. I read you. Ultimately, SCP-5001 is an article about the Foundation stumbling upon something, desperate to learn more, and finding out that they're really not the end-all and be-all of containing, of containing anomalies. Yeah, yeah. Their rapid response to the situation that developed was impressive, despite everything though, and it does appear that they did help to solve the problem that they helped create. For now, SCP-5001 will sit and continue its duty, and the Foundation just has to hope there aren't any more problems. Interesting. All right, I can dig it. I can dig it. I don't really have a quote for you, but I'll note that the breach incident occurred on December 30th, 2019. Second War of the Flesh was prophesied to start on December 31st, 2019. Either way, we're still here. Well, there we go. Well, there we go. So yeah, I kind of figured something along those lines early on. The fact that it said that it was biomechanical and it was a massive facility led me to think that it was definitely something with the broken god that there wasn't it, it it's interesting though that there wasn't like like none of the the actual factions of like the church of the broken god were there it seems or at least i guess maybe they knew that it is there and they knew just to leave it alone because of what it contained in there but you would think if that was the case they would try to keep the scp the goc and anyone else away from dealing with it you know what i mean like leave it alone like you would think that they would literally go to the scp and be like look dog we know what this facility is and we know what it contains you need to get the fuck out of here and stay away from it it's interesting that i was gonna say it's interesting that omega doesn't tell them any information about what's contained there because again, you would think letting the SCP know about that would then uh, want them to, uh, you know, stay away from it. But I guess they could also potentially a want to study it more to learn from it as the SCP does. But it could also lead to because who knows uh, if the SCP Foundation has been infiltrated in any way from any kind of sarcics, which they probably have in some levels. And of course, they would want to release Yaldabaoth. Um, but it is also interesting that, you know, potentially a Church of the Broken God follower tried to interact with it and, you know, died from it. You know, I wonder really what more that was about, like 
Because my initial thought, as I'd said, was like, okay, this is someone trying to like smuggle out information technology, maybe the AI itself uh, to sell or study or do something with. But if he's trying to interact with, you know, what he determines to be his mechan or whatever, um, I don't know, maybe it's just a situation where it just got overwhelmed by it or maybe mechan himself killed it because it's like, hey, you don't need to be here and do this, but I don't know, but it's 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 that's pretty interesting that we actually see the actual facility of, you know, what is contained, the actual cage for Yaldabaoth. You know, there is a literal thing and that's what this facility is. So, um, but yeah, that was uh, SCP-5001 Sacrosanct by the Exploring Series. Links will be down below in the info section, um, description, etc. Uh, to the original video without my commentary reaction and to the exploring series channel uh, If you do me a favor click those links if you enjoy the exploring series content go over there and give the man a sub He definitely makes a lot of wonderful content for the SP universe as well as others And if you enjoyed this video do me a favor and go over there and give it a like uh, If you'd like to join us as we do these reaction live or if you would like to uh, get early access to videos or uh, any kind of if you have any kind of uh, Requests you'd like me to do you can get priority access or priority on any kind of requests you might have if you decide uh, to become a member so there is a link below the in the description as well as a uh, join button underneath the video if you click those you can uh, check out the YouTube membership benefits and tiers and see if any of those have any interest if you decide you want to take the support to the next level but uh, that's gonna do it for this one guys thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video consider leaving a like and a sub because it helps me and helps the channel grow and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.